Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob and today we're going to be painting a Raptors Terminator. Welcome back everybody. Uh, so today uh, we're going to paint the Raptors. So we're going to start off uh, with two greens, army green, uh, which is a war paints color or war paints hair color and drab green as well. Now uh, we're going to do this over a black, uh, black undercoat. I've never painted Raptors before. So this was a bit of an experiment really. Um, did a little bit of research online about what other people had done. Um, kind of, you know, lots of great uh, models out there, but I had some transfers, some Raptors transfers laying around for you know, a project just like this one, basically, a, a tutorial. Um, and I wanted to do it in that battered um, kind of uh, scheme with, with oils um, and see what I could do. You know, these Terminators are great for kind of doing one-off um, uh, one color schemes and kind of tutorials. So uh, basically we lay down a uh, reasonable coat of army green. You can see it goes over really well. The coverage is good. Um, it's opaque. I didn't need a white pre-shade underneath it. And it probably took like three thin coats. Um, you know, you can see, see it go down. So a great color. And just as an aside, it's also a great color for uh, Death Guard this as well. I've used it for, uh, used it for Death Guard. Death Guard green. Um, and now we're going to go over to the Drab green. Now the Drab green has actually got quite a lot of yellow in it. Um, and I think when it went down, I was a little bit worried that it wasn't necessarily a natural jump between the two. In reality, when it's come out, when it, you know, when you see the final product, as we saw right at the start of this video, but we'll kind of take a, a better look later on. Actually, the, the jump is quite natural and comes across, across quite well. Um, but as I was laying it down, I was like, oh, this is a, this doesn't feel quite right. Um, but actually... I think that the, the results speak for themselves. I think it did did work in reality, and I, I, I ended up liking the liking this game. As an aside, though, I think it's perfect for uh, Death Guard, actually. The jump between the two, the Armour Green and the Drab Green, works really well for a Death Guard, um, kind of that green shoulder pad kind of look that you would find in Horus Heresy. Now, we're going to use Hardened Leather, which is a speed paint. Um, it, you know, if you've watched any of my videos before, you've seen me use Hardened Leather all the time for leather. Um, but I'm using it as a shade. Now, this is quite a, a good shade to use and creates quite a lot of contrast. Now, if you think about our color wheel, the hardened leather has quite, although it is a brown, it's got quite a lot of reds in. Um, and uh, as a result, it contrasts against the, the green within the armor. So it kind of makes everything else uh, around it brighter. Uh, it maximizes contrast, not just from dark to light but also using color theory as well which is why you know using a, a brown you know like a burnt umber something like that or hardened leather is a really good option um and i did play around with some others like warrior skin but actually i felt hardened leather was you know it, it, it was a it was a good color for this um and i think the other thing is the good thing about this color um and doing it in this way it kind of you know starts to simulate grime and dirt being built up as well so um, I skipped the next bit out because it was super boring. But basically, uh, I painted uh, white, army painted white, onto um, uh, the areas that we'll need to apply a speed paint. Um, we want it to be bright, that layer underneath, quite bright. Um, because obviously we're going to use speed paint over the top of it. Um, so it is a bit of hassle. I didn't do it on camera because, you know, you don't need to watch me paint things white. But just be careful. Just be neat and tidy when you do this. Um, and then one, this is, I think, the most boring bit about the process, doing those white elements. But the speed paint speeds things up, obviously. Now, I'm using a pallid. Let me just get it out. Pallid bone um, for the Crux Terminatuses, Terminati, and for the wings at the front. Now, I mixed it with a little bit of speed paint medium. Um, but actually, I felt that it, there was no need to mix it with speed paint medium. I would just do it straight from the bottle next time. I was a bit worried that it was the the pallid bone was going to overwhelm um, that white color. Uh, but actually, in reality, you'll see me in a bit use a second coat. So I would just recommend just doing one coat of pallid bone straight from the bottle, 
don't mix it with um, with any medium. Um, but you can do what I did, which is just do two thin thin coats. You know, com completely up to you. Um, but as I said, I've not done this before, so it's kind of it was a, you know on camera. There's a lot of kind of toing and throwing and kind of me going, oh, does that work? Does that not? But in the main, I think it came out came out pretty well. Um, if you've not used speed paints before, I really recommend them. Yeah, if you've watched any of these videos before, um, I always use speed paints in this way or through the airbrush. Um, I, I think they're so vibrant. Um, they flow really nicely. I would say that, you know, I work a lot with Army Painter and um, they help me to create these videos. So that is, you know, a bit of a disclaimer there. But as I've said in previous, previous videos before, like I would use these on my own product projects. Um, and part of the reason for that is because of the way that they flow. Um, and I much prefer the way speed paints flow over other equivalent products, basically. Um, so any tubing, uh, any kind of um, areas in between armor, uh, then we can paint with Grim Black. Uh, Grim Black's, again, really useful speed paint to have in the uh, in the arsenal. You've noticed that I, or you probably have noticed, I've got a bit of white on the armor. I clean that up a little bit later. You can clean it up with a little bit of add damage, and I'll show you how we we do that in a bit. Um, but I just go over with our original greens and just to tidy it up a tidy up a little bit. It's always difficult with you know a dark model like this green, um, and then uh, and then painting white and in between the in between the recesses. So you can see here me going for a second coat of that uh, pallid bone now. If you just do one coat, you'll you'll be fine. That that's the best way to do it. But um, it, this just enhanced the um, the overall look of it, um, and I felt it looked much better after a after a second coat. Um, I've used a lot of stone before, but because we've got quite a dark green armor, having something that was quite light uh, contrasted quite nicely against it and just made it made it pop. Um, and there's we're also going to use kind of other goldy gold elements on this model dotted around uh you know from the sword to the um kind of the 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 hanging metallic crux terminatus i don't know if that's the right right word i'm using these words but i'm not quite sure if that that's the, the the right right word or whether they're like veteran honors or something um but we're gonna have kind of gold dotted around this model um and you know this is not we're not painting this gold but it's similar in color and similar in tone you know it's a it's a yellow basically you know a, a, a sort of yellow um so i thought i thought it worked uh, really really well um i think uh you can see with the grim black there as well how nicely um and how that's knocked everything back and has flowed really nicely into the recesses recesses but also highlights all that all that ribbing uh as well which i think is great it, it's literally perfect for 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 what we're doing here Right over to the next part. So um, the next step, this step, is optional. Um, and if you see my white scars video, it's similar to that. Really, you could keep it if you want to, um, exactly like this. You know, it looks fairly decent just with two thin coats of speed paint. But what I've done is mixed a little bit of white into the pallid bone, um, and just done a little bit of highlighting on the skulls. Um, and on the top of the crux terminatus, just to refine it a little bit, just to render the shapes a little bit. Um, you don't have to do this, but I think it just makes it look a little bit nicer and it will take you all of 30 seconds. You know, it, this really didn't take me a very long time at all. Uh, so sometimes it's worth just going that little extra distance with small details because um you know it, it won't take a, a long amount of time but it it will really sell the whole model and, and make things stand out and make things pop on this this relatively dark uh, dark model so you know think about light placements you know the top of the skull uh the top of the eyebrows underneath the eye sockets you know those are typical places on skulls that we need to uh, really kind of like think about to kind of sell that sell that highlighting and then i've just added more white into um into this mix this is almost pure white now and then we're just doing finey final uh highlights i'm not going to go into transfers too much i've got loads of videos um where i've gone through transfers this is just me using microsoft just pushing it down uh making final corrections 
um, with the model. I always think that it's better to use a scalpel uh, or a hobby knife when making corrections with your transfers because often to get them uh, even and to get them uh, kind of centered, uh, it's often micro adjustments that you need to make. So doing it with a hobby knife is so much better than doing it with a um, uh, with a with a brush. Would be my recommendation. You see me here just using yeah that to make final adjustments, and then I'll leave that. In fact, I left this overnight. Actually, I wouldn't usually leave it that long. I'd probably leave it for about half an hour and then come back to it, giving it another um, uh, roll over the micro sole. Um, but uh, I just so happened just because i was recording i left it overnight at night and these were nice and flat uh i think these transfers came out come from fallout hobbies or at least the raptor head came from fallout hobbies uh from the states to a while to come uh not uh, i've heard good things about it but um i wasn't massively impressed with the transfer sheet uh partly because you need to cut around each individual head um uh which caught me out because I, I wasted some because i didn't didn't realize that we're going to use uh, oak brown for a little bit chipping uh, here and there. It's up to you how much battle damage you're going to use, but I haven't done any edge highlights on this. So we're almost using this battle damage as negative edge highlighting. Um, and you'll see me going with a brush just to refine that a little bit more in a moment. But um, certainly with some schemes, you, you don't always need to edge highlight. And if you're on a, uh, if you've on a time deficit, a time budget, you want to get an army quickly done. You, you don't need to worry about edge highlights. You can just use a little bit of battle damage to pick out the edges and it will still look uh, reasonable and still look good. Um, my aim with these videos is always to create things that are quick and easy um, for people to do at home, um, but also particularly with a focus on if you are um, you you are time poor, um, then these kind of videos will be perfect, perfect for you. And you can see here what I'm doing is just going in with that oak brown again and just picking out some uh, some edges where you can't get in with the sponge. So the bottom of the, the, the shin pad is a great example of where it's very difficult to get in with a sponge. But it looks totally unrealistic if you don't put a little bit of weathering around there because it's obviously around the feet. So it's the, the bit that's going to get the most amount of um, wear and tear. Um, and you can see me here just going around doing a little bit of uh, edging and I, I'm not doing every single edge I'm just picking out the ones that I think will be the the most obvious but you know we're edge highlighting it in a negative way with a darker color essentially um, just so a bit of battle damage uh, we're going to use Windsor & Newton oil uh, colors here now uh, you may have noticed before that the model has been glossed before I put the transfers down uh, if you want to know a bit more about that, I'd suggest you to have a look at my uh, last white scars video. But the gloss will, the gloss varnish will also help to um, the oils to flow. I've just mixed the oil paint here, the burnt umber. Burnt umber. This is this is the one for raptors. You don't really want to use any other oil paint, in my opinion. You might disagree, but burnt umber is perfect. You know, it matches with that hardened leather we got in the shadows. It then ties everything together. And this is the thing I think. When I was saying about, um, uh, you know, I felt that there was a bit of a, a jump between those two colours, between army green and drab green. Actually, the oils just ties everything together really, really nicely. Um, and it ties those browns in the shadows um, really nicely together as well. So, uh, yeah, as I say, just a little bit of uh, burnt umber mixed with um, some uh, white spirit. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I've got a cotton wool bud and then just dip that in some clean white spirit. And then I'm just wiping away um, the excess. And then I'm, I'm also bringing it in a downwards motion as well to create kind of streaking as well. Um, and you can put your own streaks in and more defined streaks in with this oil paint. Um, and again, I would recommend going have a look at my last video I did with the white scars where I kind of go through that in a bit more detail. Um, but um, yeah, you can put as many streaks in as the, you want to. Uh, for this but i'd recommend doing it with burnt umber burnt umber is always the kind of like that grimy streaky color that i use you could use something like a um a burnt sienna or something if you wanted to but i felt burnt umber probably showed up a little bit better uh we're going to use a matte varnish here i'm painted with matte varnish uh, i'd really recommend it um it doesn't kill the luster of the color which some ultra matte varnishes can do um you know some ultra matte varnishes can really affect the chroma of colors 
certainly, you know, if you're using red in particular, often some ultra mats or really, really matte varnishes can, can knock everything back. But this one uh, is a matte finish, but still keeps luster to the armor. Um, so it's almost like the best of both worlds. Um, so I definitely recommend it. And I've done exactly as I did before uh, because I'm going to use the even more speed paints now on the metallic areas and on these um, uh, kind of these parchments. Now, the reason I'd leave this till later is because I don't want any chipping on the parchment areas. That would be unrealistic. But you know, you could be like, oh, well, it's just a build up of grime and dirt and soot or whatever. But I've decided to do them separately. Um, and I will be do, kind of showing you some uh, metallic speed paints as well, which is why I'm just giving all of these just a very, very rough uh, highlight. This is just one coat. Um, I'm not worrying about covering absolutely everything. I'm just getting the main body of it done. And you'll see that that is absolutely fine. You know, you don't need to do everything. So strong tone, broadsword silver and hot like gold. Um, so you could use dark tone if you've got it, or strong tone, either one. Strong tone is just more a bit more browny, I guess. It's basically the old devil in mud is how I would describe it. And we're gonna use some metallic speed paints here. Um, and because it's a speed paint, the edges, basically, it flows into the nooks and the crannies and the edges stand out. Now, I would recommend you do a final um, little dry brush on it, but it does add depth to the uh, metallics along with the wash as well so you need you, using typical um, kind of elements that we might use with metallics but yeah it looks quite good at the end I think um, and I think the thing I would say about metallic speed paints actually is that they just flow really nicely I mean one of the things I can't stand about using metallic paints is that they can get so gummy so quickly especially if you're not using a wet palette um, whereas the speed paints just flow really nicely all the time so that it, you're not constantly going backwards and forwards with your um, uh, to your uh, to your dry palette or your wet palette. Um, so yeah, so have a look into them. I, I recommend investing in a couple. The hot black gold and broad or silver are, are pretty good ones. Um, once those two things have dried, I then just give uh, the metallic areas a wash of uh, strong tone. So again, that kind of like that brownie dark strong tone. Um, just matches with the overall theme of the armor. You know, we've got kind of like that brown, dirty, grubby look to the to the armor. Um, and you could use some oil paint washes here, but I just wanted to showcase what these um, kind of washes can still can do. Um, Blood red sand golem. So sand golem for the parchment. It as it goes down, it looks quite orangey, but actually dries a really really nice color. And you can see dotted around, we've got kind of different yellows but you know they tie together really nicely so you've got that almost that bone color from on the crux of Masters and the eagle wings we've got that kind of yellowy orange on the parchment and then we've got the gold as well so it's and then the and then you've got the white obviously from the um from the raptor symbol so dotted around this model is uh some yellow tones and brown tones uh which i think is you know it's a I think the Raptors scheme is a really, really nice scheme. Um, but I'd recommend using a limited palette in this way, I think. Uh, and then we're just going to give it spots of colour uh, with a little bit of blood red. I always use blood red for um, uh, kind of purity symbols. You could use purple for this, I think, but I quite liked the pop of red. You know, we haven't used a whole range of colours um, on our model. Um, and I thought just these little pops worked really, really nicely. Just make sure you get into, you know, these flow so easily. So just be neat and tidy when, when doing this. Right, the sword. So we're going to use these three blues and we're going to use matte white. Now, this is going to go super fast. Um, and I think as the War Paints Fanatic range drops, and I'm able to do more videos in the new year um, with those paints and show off what can happen because I've been lucky enough to play around with some of the, the initial prototypes of these, these paints. Uh, once um, kind of the paints have re been revealed and, um, you know, in earnest, I, I will show you more in-depth videos. But basically, essentially, I'm using the war paints because they're quite thin. This will help me uh, glaze a little bit later on, but I am building up quite roughly the lights and the shadows and just working my way through 
those colors um and at each stage i'll mix those colors together working up through and i'll get lighter and lighter and lighter but they're also quite useful the war paints the war paint air range because i can use them for glazing so in a bit what i'll do is i'll end up glazing uh glazing back all these quite rough um rough highlights that i've created on the sword now i would say this is quite a quick way to do it you can see me glazing here i would say that this is quite a quick way to go about doing it um and i would certainly be if I was you know, doing this for a commission or a Primark or a display model or whatever, I would definitely take more time over it. Uh, but yeah, that's one way that you can do it. You can you can do the, the highlights quite roughly, quite sketchily, um, and then glaze it all back uh, with a mid-tone colour to get it to kind of like harmonise quite nicely together. This does take quite a lot of work though, going backwards and forwards until the transitions are quite smooth. Um, and you might find when you do glaze it that you need to go a little bit lighter from where you were before. Um, so this is just a process of going backwards and forwards. And I definitely recommend a wet palette uh, for, for this kind of uh, work. Water, glaze medium you could use as well. And as you can see, we've uh, jumped a few steps ahead but essentially that's given you the main body of how to go about approaching this. Um, I did the base uh, just with some basic sand and weathering powders, you know, some oranges and ochres and reds um, and just sealed it with a little bit of white spirit. And then the head was done uh, using some army painted war paints. And I had to really do that off camera because I really wanted to take my time with the head, but I will do, um, face tutorials with the new army painter uh range the new fanatic paint range that they're going to create because i know lots of people ask me about how to do them um and it'll be great to show you um just how versatile those paints are how good they are because i've painted a couple of faces with them already but um just wait for the new year um to get some face tutorials um but i hope that's been useful for you guys um to create kind of like a raptor scheme a relatively simple and straightforward raptor scheme um you know i try to create tutorials that are easy to follow that are accessible for everybody and hopefully that this has been uh, been the case on this one uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you are watching this video and haven't subscribed make sure you do uh, i'd love it if you could like the video i'd love it if you comment i'd love it if you could share uh take care guys and i'll see you on the next one